I am a video essayist, and if you look at my YouTube channel, you'll find I'm a rather prolific one at that. Not counting this video, I published over 17 hours of content in the year 2022. Nearly every word contained within those hours was scripted, and they're all video essays. Despite that strenuous effort though, I probably spent as much time watching video essays this year as I did making them. So I do have 10 favorites to share. 10 videos I think are a cut above the rest. Truly special works. I want to recommend videos you maybe haven't seen, so I chose the arbitrary limit of videos from people with less than 100,000 subs to lift up some small fries making art just as good as the waffle fries you've likely already heard of. If you're curious, I'll put a list of 10 videos from big channels I enjoyed this year at the end of the video. But I would hate for you to get the impression that a video from someone with a million subscribers is better than the 10 videos I'm going to recommend today. They aren't. They are just by creators with a bigger audience. For now. Accompanying each video in my top 10, I'll reflect on qualities I admire in great video essays, and why I think the video in question has that quality. The list is not hierarchical. The first video is not better than the 10th. I ordered them based on how I thought it would make this video flow best. I'll also make a playlist and link it in the video description for ease of viewing. One of my favorite videos I've ever seen on YouTube is Lam Hoot's Why I Haven't Played Hades, in which he explains his Greek heritage and identity in relation to Greek-inspired video games, which, however good they may be, completely fail to capture the essence of Greek culture. Lam Hoot's tone is incredible, somehow both casual and authoritative. He walks a tightrope I've never seen another video essayist make and makes it seem effortless. It's rare for a video to feel so personal and universal. And I can honestly say I learned more from this video than maybe any other this year. Lam Hoot's video hits on my biggest piece of advice for all video essayists. Make the video only you can make. As a connoisseur of the genre, I'm always on the hunt for videos which go beyond some objective analysis. Anyone can make a video arguing Hollow Knight is a perfect indie game or Iron Man 3 stinks, but I'm always so bored when I come across such videos. I've played Hollow Knight and watched Iron Man 3. I already know how I feel about them. And whatever arguments you come up with will just be repackaged versions of thoughts I've already had. Truly special and great video essays go beyond such simple prescriptions. They tell you the story only that video essayist could tell. They connect their life, their personal experiences, their unique perspective to whatever their topic is. And in that fusion, create something wholly original, something you could have never seen coming, but also something you effortlessly relate to and understand. That's what why I haven't played Hades does so well, and why it's one of my favorite videos of the year. It may be long, but it's worth every minute. On the opposite side of the length spectrum, we've got Kiki Crazed's Why Aren't There More Thanksgiving Movies, which explores a variety of films set on the Thanksgiving holiday, attempting to ascertain what is unique about the holiday and how it gets translated into cinematic form. I love Kiki Crazed's cool tone and use of music, and this video is compact but rich and full of interesting insights. What I love most about this video is how Kiki Crazed threads the needle, or potently sews together three distinct pieces of media to find meaning. If I tried to make a video on this topic, I would fall flat on my face, as juggling three movies and meaningfully connecting their themes would probably lead me down a dozen tangents. It's just not my area of strength but that doesn't mean I don't appreciate it when I see it. Great videos find ways to stay the course and keep you engaged, even as they jump between different topics or media along the way. It should all feel cohesive as it wraps up. Tightly wound with intriguing ideas, these videos create a rich tapestry, which stays with you long after you've finished them. Not all videos need to thread the needle though, and Chariot Rider's The Man Who Spent Three Years Learning to Kill a Dragon dives deep into the history of Comer, an obscure game you've never heard of, rather than bringing together a variety of games. 
I don't know if I've ever seen a better mirroring of topic to video essayist before. Chariot's dry and precise style works as a perfect match to the strange and enigmatic history of a 25-year-old game and flowers out into all sorts of different thoughts regarding game development and the creation of art itself. Chariot's video reminds us that a good video essay finds and tells us a good story. While they may not be fictional works, all video essayists have a narrative, and Chariot gives his viewer a fantastic beginning, middle, and end to a fascinating story of passion, game development, disappointment, and the nature of art. All of his insights hinge on his ability to find this great story few had previously told, and then turn it into something you suddenly care about now, and I love that. Listen, despite what this essay looks like, not all video essays need to be artistic critiques of video games or movies. For instance, I love Dr. Fatma's video, How Science Pretends to be Meritocratic, which spills the tea on how academic fields think they reward pupils based on their skills, but just reinforce pre-established hierarchies, kind of like how people get popular on YouTube. I jest. Dr. Fatma's video is spectacular, and as a scholar getting her PhD right now, I vibed so hard with this video. Dr. Fatma's video essays hit on a core piece of writing advice that now borders on cliché. Write what you know. This pronouncement's purpose is rather simple. If you're going to spend a bunch of time talking about something, make sure it's something you can actually discuss with competence. While few people have academic expertise in a topic like Dr. Fatima has in her field, you'd be surprised at the kinds of hidden knowledge you hold about the world if you only look within yourself and try to figure out, what do I know a lot about? If you try to fake it, talking about things you don't understand, your words will ultimately ring hollow. In reality, every great video essay you've ever watched has a sea of information under the surface of what you actually watched. The essayist only showed you what was necessary for you to get the point. If a video essayist only has a surface level understanding of something themselves, they can't pick and choose what the most important ideas to give the viewer are. So I don't care if I'm the hundredth person to tell you or them this. You should write what you know, like Dr. Fatima does. Of all the channels on this list, Transparency makes the videos most like my own, but despite our similarities, we often come at topics in completely different ways. For instance, I don't think I would ever come up with as interesting of a take as their discussion of the often derided Donkey Kong Country 3 in Dixie Kong's Gender Trouble, a video which examines the critical history of the title and pushes back against the common gamer reaction to the female and baby-led adventure. Transparency's video is an excellent example of what I crave from the art form, challenging consensus. There's no quicker way to get me to click off your video than just regurgitating and defending the opinion everyone else already has. On a rare occasion, such echoing perspectives can prove interesting, but most of the time they don't present anything new to the audience, just 10 minutes to an hour of saying things they likely already agree with. When a video essayist challenges the dominant narrative, they put themselves on the line because they have to both dismantle the consensus opinion, but find and present a more valuable alternative. Most transparency videos, but especially Dixie Kong's Gender Trouble, wonderfully distill the problems with the popular take and show why that understanding only gets in the way of a much more nuanced and interesting reading, which is why I love them. But, uh, Editor's note, since I wrote this video, Transparency released Tearing Away the Fourth Wall of Your Heart, and that video challenges the lack of consensus on Tearaway, a game I've never heard of, and is maybe the best video I've seen this year. So please do yourself a favor and watch it too. You'll probably cry like I did. And even if you don't, you're gonna have a good time. I'm always happy to run into a new creator making stellar content, which was definitely the case when I ran into Maddie Merlin's video, The Tom Cruise Paradox. Maddie gives a thorough and expansive history of Tom Cruise's performances, attempting to draw a narrative through line across his many faces. One thing I've noticed from the younger essayist crowd lately is a more casual and laid back tone which Maddie may well be the queen of. She's relaxed and funny, and The Tom Cruise Paradox is a must-watch if you enjoy the actor's films. And it's a must-watch if you don't, really. 
What I admire most about Maddie Merlin's video is how evident it is that she put in the work. She watched so many Tom Cruise movies, so many Cruise interviews, and managed to channel that massive amount of preparation into a superbly watchable and interesting video. Personally, I'm envious of her commitment. I don't feel I spend enough time in the research phase of my writing for my YouTube videos. So to choose the filmography of one of the most prolific actors in contemporary Hollywood, oh boy, that takes some guts. Yet, that's what I like to see in my video essays, actual commitment to getting it right, not just surface Wikipedia level understanding of a topic. Like Maddie Merlin, Greythorn carries a relaxed and laid back vibe, but that doesn't mean she tackles laid back topics. Her video, Autistic Video Games, We Need More Please, explores ways autistic people play games and how some games reflect autistic experiences. If you are neurodivergent, you may find bits and pieces of your own experiences in the video. If you're not, you're about to learn a whole lot of new things. Either way, you're in for a wonderful time. What I love about Greythorn's video is how strongly it pursues its central theme. I crave video essays that have a point, an opinion about the world around us. Autistic video games We Need More Please is a video which knows what it wants to talk about and knows that the topic is valuable and important. While Greythorn is quippy and hurls some hilarious jokes in the essay, she considers the topic seriously and strives to genuinely go somewhere with it. As a result, with each section, I found myself more enraptured by her discussion because I knew where I was being pulled was going to illuminate how I see the world around me, and that's what's valuable about video essays. Pixel a Day is a frequent collaborator on this channel, so longtime fans will probably find the name familiar. But for those of you who managed to avoid her, she makes some of the best video essays on YouTube. It's hard to pick one from the litany of great videos she made this year, but I'm gonna go with In Search of Mystery, a wonderful collage of the different ways games create a sense of mystery and captivate players. Whether through hidden items, strange worlds, or endless and noble riddles hidden within code, she convinced me games are the most powerful medium for dumbfounding an audience and leaving them wanting more. In Search of Mystery reminds me that the best video essays aren't so concerned with finding the right answer as they are concerned with finding the right question. When you ask a powerful and interesting question, you leave your viewer with more than just a quick solution, but something they might continue to chew on for days, weeks, years to come. Both the mysteries Pixel a Day discusses and the concept of the video itself share that in common. Their open-ended nature is more valuable than an answer tied tight with a neat little bow. And the power to not have all the keys is why video essays matter. For the most part, I avoided including in this top 10 list videos I had a helping hand in the creation of, but Aranach's queer relativity is too great to leave out. In it, Aranach discusses the queer experience of time, relying on both media analysis and her personal experiences as a queer person. I don't know if I can describe where Aranach goes in a paragraph, so instead, let me explain what I found so refreshing about her video. It breaks the mold. So many video essays, mine included, follow a pretty traditional argumentative essay format. It's so common, I think we sometimes forget that a video essay doesn't have to be that in the first place. While there's nothing inherently wrong with that style, when someone comes along and does something completely different, it's a breath of fresh air. And queer relativity certainly is such a breath. Aranach beautifully captures the nonlinear and disruptive temporal experience of being queer, not just with their words, but the form of the video essay itself. Once you get inoculated to the disjointed temporal experience of the video, you're in for a wonderful and informative trip through powerful ideas and emotions. Probably one of the most annoying comments we smaller creators get on videos is something along the lines of, OMG, how have you not blown up already? I've been getting it since my channel was a few months old, but sometimes you can't help but ask, OMG, how is this video not blowing up? And I had that experience last week watching Ali Miaoi's This Edward Snowden Quote Wasted Nine Months of My Life, in which she investigates an old Snowden quote about hentai games and the existential nature of the official licensed elf game for the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, it's a pretty odd pairing, but it works. When I watch a great video essay, that's often what I'm looking for. Someone to connect two disparate things together. Things no one else might ever connect. But 
this one person did, and in so doing, created something new. Sometimes it may feel silly, but the best ideas are born not out of a singular vision, but out of a fruitful cooperation of existing thoughts. And such powerful synergy is why I watch and make video essays in the first place. So there you have it, the top 10 video essays of 2022. As a reminder, I'm including all 10 in a playlist in the description. Please, please, please watch these videos, subscribe to these creators, and then watch more of their videos. I hope this 15 minute video ends up consuming hours of your time. As a parting word, I'll throw in my favorite video I made this year, which is an elaborate review of Super Mario 64. Though because of algorithmic concerns, it might not be named that right now. If you are looking for more I Am Error, that's the best video I've got, even if it's not the one with the most views. I Am Error, saying goodbye to 2022 and anticipating all the great video essays of 2023. Signing off.